Today's video is sponsored by The Darkroom. It's finally time to take a look at the Hasselblad X-Pan and give basically my final thoughts on the camera after using it with all three lenses. You may have seen my first impressions video of the X-Pan last year. After having it for about a month, I've been borrowing it from Phil Stebley, the owner of the Darkroom, ever since probably August, I think. And now after I wrap up this video, I'm going to be sending everything back to its rightful owner. And part of me doesn't really care one way or the other, but then there's another part of me that is actually going to miss this thing, so let's talk about it. The Hasselblad X-Pan is a 35mm rangefinder, but what makes it so special is that it's a dual format camera, meaning it shoots regular 35mm frames, but it can also shoot true panoramic photos. This isn't a gimmick feature like you would see on some point and shoots, this is a true panoramic 35mm camera. That feature is why people are willing to hunt one of these down and pay quite a bit of money for them. I'm going to give you guys sort of a quick overview of the camera because in the first impressions video I break down everything in much closer detail whereas today I really want to focus on using the 30mm and the 90mm because that's where things really kind of changed my view on the camera. If you haven't seen the first impressions video, I'm going to link it down below. Definitely check that out because in there are examples of black and white film, C41, E6, and really my initial thoughts of the camera after using it for the first time, so it's worth checking out. On the top of the camera you have your shutter speed dial and you'll notice you have one one thousandth of a second all the way down to eight seconds or bulb and you also have a for automatic exposure if you want to jump into aperture priority you have plus two or minus two on the exposure compensation and you have everything from single shot continuous and self timer on the power dial itself on the front of the camera you can see you have your film speed selector and that ranges everywhere from 25 all the way up to 3200 or dx if you're using a dx coated film canister you have a flash sync down here on the front of the camera as well as a threaded cable release on the side. Up top you do have a hot shoe and right below that you have your little selector to switch between panoramic mode and regular 35mm mode. On the back of the film door you have a little LCD and that's going to give you information on your film speed as well as the battery that you have left. You also have a little window on the film door to remind you what film you currently have loaded. On the bottom of the camera you have your tripod mount as well as the battery door. The camera itself takes two CR2 3 volt batteries. Now since doing the first impressions video, Phil also sent the other two lenses over for the X-Pan. So originally I borrowed the 45mm and the body, but then he sent the 30mm and the 90mm, and this is where things kind of started to change for me in terms of how I use the camera and where I really saw its strengths. Now the two focal lengths are obviously very different and very far apart, but I think they both work really well on this aspect ratio, and I feel like they might be more fitting than the 45mm is. Is that a hot take? I have no idea. I might be upsetting some X-Pan shooters by saying that, but I do think the two lenses really add to the overall novelty that the X-Pan already has. The 30mm specifically really emphasizes that wide aspect ratio. You can pack a lot into just one frame. I shot one roll of Kodak Gold in the backyard with the kids, and I had the 30mm on the entire time. And it worked great because you could fit so much in the scene, and everything kind of tied in together, so it all worked. This photo of Nora with her arm stretched out was just pure luck, basically. I was just following her around with the camera, and she turned around and stretched her arms out, and it just felt like the most appropriate gesture for this lens and this aspect ratio. Also with a 30 millimeter you're going to notice you have an external viewfinder to attach to the camera if you do want to use it because the built-in frame lines aren't going to accommodate the 30 millimeter. So what you'll do is compose using the external viewfinder because that has the appropriate frame lines but you're actually going to need to focus first with the actual built-in viewfinder. Now with the 90 millimeter this is where things get really interesting and honestly this to me feels like the perfect setup for for shooting panoramic. One challenge that I really find using this kind of aspect ratio is that it's hard to eliminate certain distractions. And for me, composition is so much about eliminating certain distractions just as much, if not more so, than you know choosing what you do want to include in the frame. With the 30 millimeter, like I mentioned, it can pack so much into the scene and it works really well when it makes sense. Uh, for me, shooting in the backyard, Everything in the backyard, it's all a scene, it's all cohesive, it works, it makes sense. If I'm walking around town with that lens and shooting some of the historical architecture downtown, everything can look great, but then parked next to the building is an old Dodge Neon with these hubcap spinners from the early 2000s. It doesn't really add up. The first thing I always do anytime I find a scene is how can I make it work by eliminating the things that don't really need to be there. 
using a 90 millimeter, being able to cut out those distractions, as well as being able to kind of compress things a little bit and really fill such a wide frame just a little bit easier, it really does just feel like the perfect setup for this camera. And it definitely, to me, has the most cinematic feel to it, which is a word that everybody wants to use anytime they talk about this aspect ratio and this camera compressing things, being able to really fill the frame a little bit more, and also using the shallower depth of field, I think that really does help as well when you wanna isolate certain things, especially considering you're getting so much information in the scene with such a wide frame. Being able to isolate things using depth of field, that definitely helps. If I were to own this camera and I could only own one lens, I honestly think I would choose the 90 millimeter, which feels restricting, I think. For me, usually my main focal length is 35 millimeter, and if it's anything other than that, it would be a 50. 50 almost feels too tight at times, but with the 90 millimeter for this aspect ratio, this to me is the sweet spot. But of course, that's just my opinion. There are plenty of people, I'm sure, who only shoot with a 30 or only shoot with a 45. Uh, it's really interesting to see with this aspect ratio how each lens really transforms the entire thing. 30 and 45 are pretty close, just like 35 and 50 millimeter are pretty close, but you don't see as much of a difference, in my opinion, on a regular 35 millimeter aspect ratio comparing a 35 and a 50 as you would with this lens, full panoramic comparing the 30 and the 45. It's just interesting how much that changes things. All in all though, the camera is great. The built-in light meter works really well. Having aperture priority is great if you're shooting quickly, although with this camera, I tend to shoot a little bit slower pace just because I have so many different things going on in such a wide frame, uh, but it is convenient that it's there. And again, of course, you can switch it to regular 35 millimeter mode if you just wanna treat this as sort of your everyday 35 millimeter camera. The prices on these have gone up and up and up over the years, um, understandably so. It is definitely a unique and again, novelty kind of camera for me. I don't necessarily know that I would spend the money on one, but I have really enjoyed using it. And again, big thanks to Phil Stebley for not only just letting me borrow the camera, but letting me borrow the entire kit for so long. I really do appreciate that. It is time for me to send this camera back to Phil, to its rightful owner, and also I do want to take this time to thank our sponsor again today, which is The Dark Room. If you're looking for a place to get your film developed, scanned, or printed, or all of the above, definitely check out thedarkroom.com. The lab is located in San Clemente, California. Uh, I actually went there last year and filmed a little behind the scenes video of what goes into a professional film lab, so definitely check that video if you haven't already. The Dark Room is run by incredible people. Uh, Phil Stebley, who has loaned me this camera, he's become a great friend, but everyone from top to bottom at The Dark Room, they are all very dedicated to the film photography community. That personally for me is one of the biggest things I love about The Dark Room. They're constantly doing photo contests and giveaways and putting out blogs and education for the film community to help new film shooters and experienced film shooters as well. And they're just great people. Uh, for me, that goes a long way. I love knowing that there are great people behind behind a company and the dark room is definitely full of them. So again, if you need to get your film developed, scanned, printed, anything at all, definitely check out thedarkroom.com. But that's gonna be it for the X-Pan review and my time with the X-Pan itself. I'm gonna go ahead and get everything packaged up and sent back to Phil later today. So if you guys have any questions at all about the X-Pan, any of the photos that I've shared here or in the first impressions video, please leave them in the comments down below. And if you're new here, go ahead and give the video a like and subscribe if you haven't already. We have new videos every Monday at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, as well as some other videos kind of sprinkled in throughout the week whenever I can. But that's it for today. So thank you guys for everything. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.